Let's shoot a squid game today. Yeah, let me do what I'm good at. Welcome back to the Chakde system design series. In this episode, we'll be talking about front end system design, which is Netflix. We are going to cover a lot of things related to the Netflix. So starting with the functional requirement, non-functional requirement, like how streaming works, what are the different protocols which are used in the streaming, what Netflix are using and even the other competitors or you can say likewise streaming platforms like YouTube's are using. So we'll be talking about more in depth. We'll be also covering like what is HTTP2, what is HTTP3, uh, what, what are the different type of configurable UI, how you can have a better performance on the UI covering all these things and getting into the technical details, what are, what are the tech stack basically used by the Netflix, how Netflix is basically managing the micro front end. We will be covering a lot of the implementation detail, not limited to that. We are also going to cover the back end for the front end for the Netflix. So keep watching the episode and you are going to bombard it with so many interesting things. Things to cover in the Netflix system design. In the previous episode also, cracking system design interviews, we have already gone into the depth. So mostly in system design, we used to cover the five areas. And obviously, like it's a combination of HLD and uh, LLD. So first is requirement. In requirement, we'll be covering two things, which is functional and the non-functional requirement. Then is the scoping. Like everything can't be covered uh, like in a uh, given in, uh, time duration, which is 45 minutes or one hour, right? So it's very difficult. So we'll be doing a scoping and we'll be covering some of the critical, you can say pieces, which is more specific to the Netflix. Then we'll be getting into the tech choices. What are the things that uh, you have to take care and what are the different options and what Netflix is basically using out of that. Then we'll be getting into the component architecture of the Netflix. Then after that, diving into the data API protocols and the different implementation details we will be getting into. So with this, let's get started with the requirement. Requirements as we discussed, functional and non-functional requirement. In terms of functional requirement also, we used to think in from a broader perspective and then getting into the, you can say feature level thinking. So one is module level, what are the different modules that can be there in the Netflix and then coming into the feature level thinking. So when we say module level thinking, it's good to dive into both the dimension, which is supply and the demand. It totally depends where the interview want you to dive into. You can go into the more detail, but it's good you if you think from both the perspective. In case of Netflix, uh, the end customer doesn't mostly have this capability to basically upload the videos. The supply is basically from where the, the input source of that particular platform or the requirement is coming. In case of Netflix, it's more around the videos, TV series, right? From where these videos and TV series are coming, it's more around that. Uh, so, but still, if you have to compare it with the YouTube and other platform where you have this capability, it's good to highlight those capabilities so that uh, like interviewer knows like what are the things you are think, even thinking basically or from the supply side of thing as well, right? So in terms of the supply, the first thing is like from like to upload a video, right? Video uploading is very important thing. Second, once you have uploaded the video, you wanted to see the analytics, right? So how many people have watched? What are the watch? a lot of information you wanted to track. Uh, meta info, when you are uploading the video, meta info in terms of you wanted to add the title, description, lot more information related to the video, uh, the categories and lot more, those, those things that comes into the meta info, basically you can say, and definitely a tagging is very important feature where people can search uh, based on the tags that you have provided and the SEO sort of thing that is coming to the, so I think that is more than enough in order to cover in, ter in terms of the supply, this is the high level stuff that we have talked about. And in, in terms of the demand, uh, when we talk about the Netflix, the critical things that we see, obviously are multi-user support. You can create a multiple uh, profile basically on the Netflix and uh, you can have some uh, parental control over uh, there as well. So we'll be talking about that. Uh, second is like, obviously you can have a pricing and subscription model. So it's pricing and subscription uh, the other thing which I can think of is is obviously your account management where you can change your profile information lot more thing you can do uh, on top of it what what if there is some issue while like making a payment or say suppose uh, when when you are watching some videos you are not able to access sort of thing right those kind of stuff are there obviously you need a lot auth module where you log in and sign up sign in sign up sort of thing are available. 
uh, on top of it now coming to the critical pieces of the netflix that we we talk about like right? it's like you wanted to have a movie or you can say the tv series catalog right which is most important in the critical you can say business model of that uh, second clicking on any one of them you get into the detail page uh, you go into the detail page of the tv series or a movie you have a watch list as well where you can decide these are the favorite and basically i wanted to go and look into that afterwards and obviously the reviews right so you can give the review i like the particular video or not sort of thing are, are there right in in couple of the platform you even have a capability to provide the comments right so those kind of thing will come into the review let's dive into feature level thinking okay so when we talk about feature level thinking so mostly we let's try to cover uh, areas where we have home page related stuff okay let me quickly make it a bit small okay yeah so we'll be covering stuff related uh, features on the home page we'll be covering the catalog related features we will be getting into the detail we'll be talking about multi user management let's did get into the detail of video player also uh, in netflix what do you need we need obviously we have review system so where you can do a like comment sort of thing okay let's quickly go to the netflix and see how these features look like and what are the features we wanted to pick in each of them okay this is our netflix ka home page what all we see we are right not not logged in so first thing which we see as in you can do a sign in or sign up over here uh, you can change the languages from here what else we have we, this is again going to trigger the same thing and there are certain banners uh, there are certain sections certain widgets basically which showcase the different important things that netflix provides right so there are two ways to think of as a developer as a designer basically we, we could have thought this to design as an hard coded ui but netflix doesn't do that how netflix do that netflix have a configuration configuration of what visit need to be rendered and what content need to be rendered and basically based on that it does this so basically the configurable ui we can mention right and uh, okay these are the critical information that we have on the home page uh, okay let's quickly do a login and we'll see what are the other information that we have so probably doing a login okay we are logged in we are going to switch to different profile we have an option to switch the profiles as well over here so what we are going to do we are going to see there is a obviously this is a your list page or uh, you can say the home screen after you log in you see the banner you see certain content over a, a, a video playing background there is a sort of you can say categorization or you can say the catalog that we see for the different uh, dif different genres right so these are all stuff are available over here on top of it we have certain categorization in terms of the catalog we see the tv shows movies new and the popular and my list wish list sort of stuff are available over here okay so when we try to play any of these videos let's see what what we have uh, what should we play okay so let's play all of us are dead probably this is something hilarious but yeah okay uh, we we see there is a preview preview there are two type of preview you click on that you get a preview over here and on top of it when when you hover on any of these you get a preview so you see uh, there is a preview video as well and there are certain contents there are certain things like we have a like dislike options add to wish list these features and functionalities are available right and obviously there is a video player video player there are very small functionalities which are available over here but when you actually go and uh, try to open any of these videos you get a lot of control over here so what, what these controls are basically so let's mute this and let's see we you can actually jump between the different places like you can actually try to move these video like 10 seconds ahead or the back side uh, there are certain things in terms of you can change the audio you can add the subtitle there is a feature to control your speed limit there is feature to zoom in and zoom out sort of thing right these are the critical things that we have uh, on the netflix uh, okay so uh, what we are going to do uh, we are going to jot down this feature and we'll be covering how we can implement this going forward so right now these are the feature level uh, stuff that we wanted to cover so let's quickly list down them okay we saw the language change let's start from the home page what did we saw first feature was related to language change 
second was related to doing a sign in sign up uh, sign up uh, what was other configurable ui so where you don't have to hard code everything it's more about you pass down the configuration and similarly your ui is going to be rendered in catalog what we have seen we have seen a search feature we have seen a feature related to there was a card preview as well so there was a card preview let's quickly see okay there was a card preview then what did we have apart from we have a banner preview these are the important thing that we have in the catalog and uh, in terms of multi-user support obviously switching was one of the functionality switching between users and the second was which we didn't saw but it was related to the parental control so this is again a very important feature and functionality when we talk about netflix especially uh, okay, so video players, we have seen, we have uh, like mechanism to control our speed. We have mechanism to even control the quality as well. Uh, okay, so we have uh, in Netflix, we might not see that because that is adaptive automatically it adjusts the speed. But in other, you can say OTT, we might see this quality control as well. We have support to change the language. We have support to change the tight subtitle. Basically, you can decide which language do you prefer in terms of the subtitle and obviously we have one more capability where we can see the preview of preview or you can say thumbnail over the thumbnails over video right i just wanted to see what are the different different areas and what how it will look like you can use the thumbnail we will be talking about how these thumbnail and how basically netflix is basically doing this in terms of the review it's more about the like dislike and you can say comments so comment section is not available over here but in other ott like uh, it, it can be anything like a streaming provider like you talk about the youtube then in that case we have that okay so we have jotted down the feature level uh, you can say detail uh, for the netflix and the related streaming platform so we will be like let's dive into the non-functional requirement that is required in terms of the netflix okay so support in your mobile and desktop which is true okay make it quickly small so that it can adjust make a space for others as well okay so we have to support for mobile and desktop obviously we'll be talking about streaming streaming is very important when we talk about the ott right uh, we need a responsive behavior as well so for responsive adaptive is not required we can make it responsive so that it fits in most of the resolution uh, then devices as we discussed mobile devices or you can say desktop that is important either we are going to have in the tab uh, and obviously location is very important factor when we talk about serving these uh, videos from different different places for different different people right uh, in terms of optimization asset optimization is one of the critical thing when we say asset optimization it's video optimization your images optimization uh, obviously css and js are something common where we wanted to do for everyone but in in case of netflix the video in the images optimization are very very important uh, resource hinting is also a good thing that we should we will be discussing over here when we say resource hinting it's more about your prefetch preload so that we know what are the things that going that are going to be used in the you can say upcoming screen or upcoming for so that we it can be loaded as soon as possible right so those uh, resource hinting can be given uh, open graph tags basically if we wanted to share these uh, videos or links how it is going to look like on the different social media or you can different platform this is uh, be basically majorly tackled by the open graph which is a part of a SEO but yes this is also very important when you wanted to have any streaming like platform where we wanted to give a thumbnail and wanted to look at very cool when it is being shared right deep linking is important say suppose if we are searching something on the browser but on while searching on the uh, mobile browser we wanted to like trigger the click from your browser to the uh, your mobile application right inside your mobile application we wanted to directly open a particular detail page or a particular you can say video for that deep linking is very important that can be given uh, that that can be used obviously uh, performance we can talk in general 
uh, where we will be talking about how to render your you can say Netflix application as soon as possible. Uh, in case of Netflix, it does both. It does like client side rendering and server side rendering depending on the use cases. Uh, we can see in what all cases we can achieve that. Authentication, auth, basically your authentication and authorization both are important in case of Netflix. Uh, as you have parental control, you have access control. So those kind of thing basically can be seen. So who can access what sort of thing. Uh, on top of it, then we have something called uh, security is like you don't want your your videos to be leaked or anyone accessing your videos sort of thing right so one thing which we are going to discuss which is very important in order to make your your better performance which is related to http2 and http3 we'll be going into the detail of these and we'll be discussing about that caching is also something which is very important for netflix we where it wanted to cache your assets so that it does not load uh, things again and again it use, optimizes and uses from the offline support which make more sense in case of mobile but yes we will talk about what are the offline support we can give pwa is definitely related to that uh, progressive web app we'll be talking about uh, ab testing is very important in case of the netflix because it wanted to see how the different thumbnail how the different things are working for the different user so it it mostly tried to do a lot of ab testing in terms of the content uh, and obviously in terms of the ui basically which is shown to the users so based on that it does a lot of uh, ab testing uh, versioning obviously in order to uh, support lot of the ab testing and in order to roll out so many changes at a faster rate it also support the versioning uh, in order to have better control uh, internalization and localization is again very very important uh, for for netflix to scale and localization i can say so without this obviously it can't provide the content for the different local different you can say audios different subtitles it has a lot of thing which is it's provided basically for different different uh, stuff uh, on top of it we will be uh, we can talk about some testings that are supported testing framework and the way it does the testing over uh, in the netflix Okay, so we are done with the requirements. It's time to scope out because the things which we have discussed can't be covered. Uh, the entire thing can't be covered in a single video and you can't cover in the interviews as well, right? So in order to go through the details of this, we have already talked about a non-functional requirement prior to this video. Do check out the previous uh, episode of the check this system design. And we will be covering a lot of, you can say, streaming related, you can say opt opt asset optimization related, We'll be talking about HTTP, HTTP 3 basically, HTTP 2 and 3 in this particular video. We'll be covering a lot of non-functional requirement in detail. But for the other, it's better to check out the previous video. Now it's time for the scoping. Let's scope. So we can't make 45 minutes in 45 minutes. Cool. Hmm. So what will we make? Everything will not make. So important things will make. What are like more suitable for Netflix? Configurable UI. This is a good one. Even long language change support Netflix में है और ये बहुत important है. Catalog searching, card preview, banner preview. We can talk about couple of thing which is important. Search is something which is very generic. We will cover in some other video. Maybe we can talk about uh, in in general uh, configurable UI that will be helpful. On top of it, uh, switching between the users is something which we can talk about which is important. This entire video related stuff is very important where we'll be talking about controlling speed, quality, language change, subtitle, thumb, how to support uh, the thumbnails basically. Review is again we can cover in some other videos which is not very very relevant to this uh, which can be in general and common. Non-functional requirement mein kya banaya jai? Streaming is very important right. Uh, then asset optimization is again an important thing. Okay, then HTTP 2 and 3 we never talked about. We, let's talk about that as well. Uh, okay, apart from that, anything that we should discuss about? Maybe when we talk about uh, streaming, we will be talking about a lot of protocol sort of thing. And uh, that is very helpful. Uh, okay, I think that's good enough. And uh, internationalization and localization is something we'll be talking about uh, while getting the technical depth and getting into the more on the implementation side. So let's jump into the technical detail. Let's see what tech stack Netflix is using. So uh, we will be talking, we will be getting into the details of li what libraries or the framework Netflix is using. 
what they are doing in terms of like micro front end how they are having their micro front end what are they having the mono repo or you can say multiple repo sort of so uh, like what design system they are using build tools what they are using and what are the dependencies in order to build the major core uh, you can say streaming product right so we'll be discussing all all of them but before jumping into the details of these let's quickly see what are the different language different tools different dependencies that they have overall right so they are also using the python node.js react java we can see in, ter in terms of databases they are using mysql uh, like postgres uh, they have amazon Dyn uh, DynamoDB, right cassandra they they are using a lot of stuff and uh, on the right hand side you can see they are using git github which is very common and obviously for the pipeline purpose they have the jenkins and uh, for you can say confluence is there for uh, for the documentation stuff uh, so there are a lot of stuff we can see over here there are ec2 instances they are using and obviously winjs for uh, basically windows application uh, they, they are using yeah so let's quickly dive into one one by one into into the details of them in terms of the library or the framework any guesses hopefully most of the people will be able to guess yes it's react js they are using in order to develop their uh, they are front end most of the places they have react obviously they are using the typescript for in top, uh, top of it uh, those people who haven't started with the typescript probably i will say go and definitely have a look into the typescript so it's a framework uh, language you can say on top of the javascript which provides a lot of uh, you can say type checking which helps to avoid your you can say runtime issues right so it give you more confident what whatever you are writing they are using rxjs uh, if you are not aware of, about the rsjs so basically this is uh, this is basically this provides the observable pattern or you can say you it makes your application reactive when we say reactive anything which is happening a sync right or anything which is event driven it manages it helps to manage those multiple events or you can say async behavior very smoothly using reactive uh, uh, you can say reactive programming or rxjs so how it basically works i will give you a few glimpses uh, so consider example you have made a api call now you don't have to basically wait for it so generally how basically promise work in some in a in a different pattern altogether it, it is basically using the observables behind the scene how it works once that job is done it will trigger back and people who are have subscription for the same event so basically they will get to know if your api call is resolved and similarly any kind of you can say event driven uh, stuff can be done using the rxjs uh, they are using if i have to tell about restify they instead of using the express they are using restify because the number of requests that can be uh, handled per second are much better in terms of the speed and the performance so this is although the orchestration layer basically uh, they are using for and they do a lot of input and output operation using the restify similarly they have uh, falker so uh, they use falker and grape uh, you can say graphql both so some places um, they have started moving a lot on the graphql layer so people who are not uh, explored the graphql so probably we can cover it all together separate but do look into that this is a bit different from how the rest word basically used to do Falker is basically their uh, whole intent was they wanted to have a single schema so that single schema can be used across multiple microservices or different layer on the UI so that they don't have to define it multiple times all the consumer knows how, how a particular schema how a particular definition how a particular API how a particular you can say uh, a model will look like. So in order to have a single source of truth, a single structure around any kind of modeling, they came up with the Falker and they, they are using that. Uh, in terms of micro front end, uh, basically they are using an uh, internal tool which they have built on top of a concept called uh, uh, federation. So which is, you can say module federation. Module federation this is provided by webpack so they are using like webpack uh, module federation obviously as they are using the react they are getting this benefit out of box uh, in terms of mono repo how they are able to leverage when we say mono repo it's like multiple team working together on the same project on the same repo altogether they have different responsibilities definitely different team working on different different pieces but their code reside in a single repo how they are able to leverage and how they are able to share their packages and their dependencies to each other 
and that to managing multiple versions of them by by using learner if you haven't explored i will recommend you to go and check out the learner it's going to give you another level altogether how you can scale your team basically while like having a, your code in a single repo altogether in terms of design system they are using something called uh, hawkins they have built their own design system so that they can have the consistency and they can have their own uh, design language altogether for build tool it's webpack as they are using extensively webpack uh, in order to build their application uh, in terms of uh, dependencies i will be talking about a uh, very important thing like in terms of images they use image blob for most of the places which i have seen so uh, image blobs basically they they load it uh, as a blob and basically they consume it at the most of the places and obviously there are benefit like you can create these blob on the ui as well in most of the places so and on top of it uh, the youtube does in a different fashion altogether they use a sprite so if you are not aware of the sprite it's more about it creates it combines multiple small small images in a single images and they have a sing, same placement altogether i will be showcasing this in the implementation detail but to give a idea uh, on the right hand side you can see there are some images those are combined together instead of shipping these small small icon as an independent images uh, what youtube does it ship it together as a single uh, image so that it does avoid the round trips and the number of connection it makes and in order to consume any of these images we have a algorithm where we can basically find out which index you wanted to show how much width of this particular uh, you can say icon or grid it is and we can locate that and we can showcase that that is how basically is the sprite work uh, so anything on the video we basically when we hover and we see a thumbnail which is visible for any of the timeline so those kind of things are done through the sprite in in terms of the youtube and uh, other places a uh, couple of places they are using F svgs as well so these are the three major stuff and obviously the the png and other stuffs are used but these are actively used uh, in you can say uh, netflix and other ott uh, in, in terms of video uh, earlier there was a time when people used to use flash now we have html5 video tags they are utilizing it very effectively and on top of it we have something called media sources so using media sources uh, like youtube and other uh, ott are able to manage how they wanted to control their videos their qualities the moving forward as in fast changing the language and all sort of thing are done very effectively using the media source where you have a control using the javascript altogether so this is this is a control basically which we get uh, while using the video tag and the media sources uh, on top of it uh multiple otts are managing in different fashion altogether they are using http 1.1 to 2 and uh, even like i have to talk about youtube youtube is using http 3 altogether we'll be talking about what are the differentiation between http 1.1 2 and 3 and we will be getting into the detail okay so with this uh, and obviously they are uh, like doing a streaming which we said right so we'll be talking about the streaming concept how what are the different protocols of the streaming and how uh, like netflix is utilizing and how the other you can say players are basically leveraging the streaming so yeah let's understand what is the difference between the downloading and the streaming i know most of the people you are champ you already know what is the difference but still for people who are not aware so downloading is like you have a lake and you need water right and someone says that i need all the water what he will say le jao tumhare to lake hai uthao aur le jao jahan le jana hai it's very difficult how can you carry the entire lake right similarly the downloading is but, but when you say about streaming streaming is like you create a path where you you ship the item in a small small packet and a small small continuous flow right this is how a streaming work so which you can relate to the actual stream say suppose there is a requirement in a farm what do you do pura lake utha ke nahi dal dete na you create a pathway through which a stream of water can be flowed to your farm right similarly a streaming works you have seen in youtube in you have seen in netflix uh, basically uh, your your video is not downloaded as an entire in a single uh, go right it keep on streaming so let's let's understand what are the different pro streaming protocols and let's understand from bit history like how it started earlier we were having the flash player where we were using real time messaging protocol uh, which we call as an rtmp there was a lot of challenges challenges in terms of 
uh, we were not having a control in terms of managing the speed, the quality, changing the language on demand. So those are the use cases which came and it becomes very difficult in order to use. And obviously there was dependency of installing the plugin. If you remember, like in your browser, you have to have a like flash player plugin in order to utilize it. Then we came up with a like HLS, which is uh, still highly used by a lot of, you can say the players, uh, which is also called HTTP live streaming. Uh, most of the like players are using it depending on for what, what sort of device it is going to utilize and obviously it is a part of Apple and if you want to stream anything on the Apple so it is still like highly recommended you have to use the like HLS so which is HTTP uh, live streaming right and uh, it also helps in order to maintain the quality like if you wanted to have a buffering feature you wanted to have a different qualities need to be stream and that too automatically you wanted to achieve that all of them can be done now as the different different player initially Adobe came into the picture before that the Macromedia came into the picture they started having their different different own protocols different rules and regulation and patterns then there is a standard which came all together which was called Dash so which is called the dynamic adaptive streaming over the HTTP this becomes the standard and most of the people started utilizing it so it is ISO publish and then uh, basically most of the streaming you you can see in the YouTube also in the Netflix also this dash is something which is highly used right if you are going for the Apple devices still you can see the HLS is highly used and recommended but dash is something which is becoming more and more popular now after that a uh, new uh, in 2017 it called uh, it, the you can say SRT came into the picture which is secure reliable transport where people wanted to have more secure and uh, security in terms of the content which is being shipped to the uh, client uh, devices right so still people are like leveraging it but uh, the, 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 the you can say the companies or the players which are using the dash and HLS are uh, very high as compared to if you have to say the SRT and obviously uh, with the new HTTP 3 the uh, the new player altogether coming into the picture we'll be talking about that and uh, which have changed the way the streaming basically is done which is leveraged by YouTube right now and we'll be going into the detail of that. Let's understand the TCP uh, HTTP protocol, right? So what are the different protocols that have evolved over the period of time and what benefit the different, uh, you can say streaming platform or in general for the performance and the optimization, what people are using, right? So let's get in, into the detail of first HTTP 1.0. So at that time, people were using obviously the, the rest concept, like they were having the HTTP connection where there was some get put, uh, get and post request, and there were certain headers which are supported. Uh, but with the HTTP 1.1, there were new methods, new response code, which were added in order to identify what kind of response it is getting. And certain more headers were evolved, right? Like what, what is the host header? What is the connection uh, related header? And there were certain other encodings which were enabled in, in you can say 1.1. Uh, then from 1.1 and 2, so there are certain limitation in 1.1, which were very critical first, like for every connection you have for every request you have to make a connection you get tcp connection and finally you get a record so like you have a web page inside that web page there are multiple assets right and you have to fetch all those assets so every time a new connection is made and basically a request is served so there is multiple round trip which is happening in case of 1.1 so in in two basically there are uh, multiple things were that was introduced one was streaming right uh, multiplexing which you can say there was a support of push we will be understanding what is multiplexing what I just said uh, there was a push mechanism which was introduced which it meant by uh, your server can keep on sending the data to the client and uh, where your client have don't have to request multiple times prioritization of the request that can be managed very easily in terms of the uh, you can say HTTP 2 and also there was better compression of the header was that was introduced in HTTP 2 before moving ahead in our order to understand the HTTP 3 uh, there are certain things that we have to understand first there are different layers which are which are common in you can say, say HTTP 1.0 1 1.1 and 2 which is you have an IP on on IP you have a TCP protocol and then you have TLS which which was optional in in these cases which is mostly required for your uh, you can say security purpose and TCP is obviously it involved multiple steps where you have to do first handshake uh, 
uh, with your server once you have get the acknowledgement you you make a confirmation is this is the server where i want to talk for there is multiple round trip in order to make this handshake and finally your data your first byte basically start uh, serving from the server to the client so those multiple handshakes and multiple stuffs are happening in terms of the tcp which is not happening going forward we'll be seeing where before that let's let's understand one important concept uh, which is called multiplexing when we say multiplexing as we said the streaming or the multiplexing over here how it works you have a http like http 1.1 if there is a web page which is requested there are multiple asset like you have jquery css and some images all of these are going to make a separate request uh, to the server and your server is going to serve them as a different tcp uh, connections right but in http2 what you can say i want this web page with that web page it your server obviously there's there some coding and some logic has to be there in the server where it identifies these are the dependencies in this web page where in a single tcp connection it can keep on sending you all the assets which are required where you actually save on multiple round trips from the client to the server right so that's a major benefit that you get in the multiplex before jumping into uh, http3 let's understand what are the different network layer that we have we have ip we have tcp on top of it we have tls which is for the security tcp is basically uh, a connection reliable connection which does the acknowledgement from the server and make sure your your data from the server and to the client is 100 percent transferred if there is some loss it will give you an error right so it makes sure your uh, it provides you acknowledgement and makes you guarantees the delivery of the packet so uh, with this there was a problem as it provides the uh, guarantee right your packet will be delivered and your packet will be delivered in the same order in which it was sent right it becomes a, it creates a problem also when we say problem it's create a HOL so uh, HOL blocking which is called, called head offline blocking if say suppose any of your packet is stuck in between it is not going to deliver all the packets which are behind that so it provides a delay in all overall you can say the streaming or behavior so for that what uh, like google came up with it's like uh, it, google came up with quick which is a http3 protocol uh, which is built on udp if you don't understand udp we'll be talking about the tcp and udp differences uh, just after that so what it does it has an app layer basically which is called quick which internally takes care of the capabilities which are provided by the TLS and TCP uh, so it, it it basically makes things very fast as UDP is con you can say connectionless where it does not do any handshake sort of thing and but your quick internally implements the security so you don't have to worry about internally quick will take care of that rest everything remains the same where you get the multiplexing you get the uh, push behavior from server to uh, you can say client as we talk about the streaming all all those uh, stuff you get in the HTTP 3 as well so now in order to understand majorly the difference between TCP and UDP like why UDP was not used earlier and how it is going to benefit right now let's try to understand when we say TCP uh, so uh, TCP basically is as we said it is connected and UDP is connectionless uh, second important thing is TCP is reliable as we said it will guarantee your packet is deliver 100% and in case of UDP there can be loss in the packets as well so in TCP the data is uh, data is streamed in terms of the byte uh, but in case of UDP it is transferred in terms of the packet uh, in TCP there is no order like in TCP there is order guarantee from the server to the client so but in UDP there is no sequence guarantee so anything can anything can be transferred first so your client have to basically take care of how it is going to leverage that on top of it as your TCP does first go to the server do the handshake do the acknowledgement and then start transferring the byte but in case of UDP they, it get rid of all those things so the transfer of data is very fast because those multiple round trips extra round trips are avoided so uh, definitely that's why your tcp is a bit slow and your udp is a bit fast because it avoids multiple you can say handshake and sort of thing if you have to understand in very simple layman term uh, basically at tcp you can consider a courier boy who is coming to deliver your packet he asks you for the otp and verification in terms of either signature or udp in order to confirm that you got your packet right that is called a tcp in terms of udp it's like i will deliver your packet outside the door it if it get lost i don't care like you have to take care of that but my delivery will be super super fast as compared to the tcp so that's what the major differences between the tcp and udp exist so there why why we are discussing this tcp and udp because it helps in order to get the lot of performance 
while streaming also while delivering your assets uh, also from in your any of the web page from the client to the server and server to the client so those benefit that we get in order to make more faster application uh, with this uh, we will be talking about what are the different like uh, you can say streaming protocol also and what are the different players that we have video players basically which is obviously built on the video tag and the media source that we discussed above how it help us how it leverages lot of challenges and it provides it provides a black box stuff to you so that you get a lot of capabilities out of box you don't have to manage a lot of things so let's let's dive into that we can build our own video player using the video tag and the the media source api which is available so in the browser we can use the combination of both we can basically leverage how we wanted to stream we can manage the speed we can also have capabilities where we can change the quality change the language right we can add the subtitle all those things can be done U using like video tag and the media source basically we can create but there are a lot of challenges basically people get while implementing and creating their own uh, video player so first of all like uh it's like if certain packets are lost right you don't want to show the jerky experience to the user there is there should be some capability to jump those stuff automatically in order to avoid it may be a small small few seconds gap right even that glitch is very hard you can't stop the, uh, the video player to keep on working or buffering sort of right uh, second is you wanted to provide the offline control as well where you wanted to uh, show the offline experiences but again you have to think about the security of or you can say the protector content for the which you wanted to provide only to the subscribed user you don't want to be available for everyone similarly the authentication for all the packets which are happening you have to think about that preloading preloading in two terms one is in terms of the buffering second in terms of the first uh, load of your application while loading your first you can say video player you wanted to make sure certain packets are already loaded so that it doesn't wait for a couple of you can say second or millisecond in order to load that data and, and start showing the video so those, those kind of experiences casting experiences where you want to cast your video from netflix of your mobile or yes, 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 yes suppose laptop to your tv right those kind of casting support multiple type of protocols that we talk about which is hls http live streaming mms uh, which is uh, related to microsoft smooth uh, streaming right so similarly adobe has the sds which we talked about so these kind of different protocols are supported or not is something which we have to uh, take care of showing the thumbnails when you are hovering on the timeline or the you can say the uh, the time feature which is provided on the video player we can basically hover and see the thumbnail what is will be available after 5 second or 10 minutes sort of right uh, pwa and web uh, web service uh, workers basically what it meant by offloading certain capabilities that you don't want to do in the main thread can, can it be delegated to the service worker or, or you can say the different thread altogether so those kind of functionality network filters which basically will ensure if there are certain errors in retrieving certain packets do you get an acknowledgement so that you can take a decision like you wanted to do a retry you wanted to do basically do a jump on that particular second right all those capabilities in order to provide better user experiences so these are the things basically which we have to take care of while building our own player now let's talk about what are the different uh, popular players which are video players which are available in the market one is definitely the dash.js second is the saka uh, basically these are the two player one is definitely provided by the google uh, without says it definitely it has and uh, this is also popular most of the uh, like companies and streaming are using the dash.js and couple of them have in, like created their own player because they wanted to have the better experiences we have to think about uh, does it suppose the HLS or the dash because these are the two protocol which are heavily used across and does it provide a good APIs also so there are other sort of you can say players which are or you can say library which are also available which people use but again these are two of the popular you can try out the other ones as well so uh, why this HLS dash need to be taken care of because uh, we have to think about we have to provide the adaptive uh, streaming where depending on the quality say suppose you are traveling while traveling there can be glitch in the internet speed from couple of mbps to couple of kb component designing now most of the front-end developer are like dude i'm champ in this Matlab, kya karna, right i'm pro don't tell me anything uh, give me a design what i need to implement and i will be able to wrap it up right but still there are certain points i wanted to highlight so that everyone is aware first 
any design which is given to you try to think from a skeleton perspective forget about all the colors which are there forget about all the look and feel images which make it very cool right forget about all those things try to think in terms of the skeleton right second try to think in the component hierarchy so what are the different levels that we have two two terms one what are the common pieces that can be built as a part of the design system that can be reused so that you don't have to implement those pieces again and again if you have decided these are the different components that can be kept as in your design system or the common component library altogether which you can leverage again and again just import and use it instead of like implementing again and again second the flow level is uh, the page level flow like you have your header you have your ba main banner then you have certain carousels inside the netflix right think in those direction third thing related to the service before jumping into the implementation plan what are the different services that you will be needing in order to basically have a better uh, you can say better control and obviously better modularity and separation of concern as we say routing is very important most of the people doesn't consider routing in the initial go but as the application grows they wanted to make every page every url and every action as in context aware right that your route as in context aware so that's why so that people reload a particular url that url basically persists the the thing which is being shared from yeah so data sharing is very important because you can you don't want to load again and again the same set of data from the server if you have already certain things uh, with you right so say suppose you have certain reviews with you and you are going to the detail page probably you don't want to re like reload those pages or reload uh, look for those uh, content from the server you are from the list page and you are going into the detail page probably you have certain information in the list page you wanted to leverage those information into your detail page so that data sharing how you wanted to do that data sharing is very very important right so sometimes you wanted to you did some activity and similarly on that same time you are seeing that you are continuing watching section right probably you don't want to make an api call in order to see what you are watching uh, previously right it's more about you did some activity and automatically you are sharing your data with the different services altogether so that the different component and different thing can leverage that right so obviously implementation detail you can go into using rxjs and different you can say data store in order to have that but yes uh let's go to the netflix and see what i meant by the skeleton visualization design system and sort of thing and from there you will get a better understanding of how you should visualize before building any of the application say you are given this piece uh this page to be developed which has a nav bar it has certain video player it has certain description over here it has certain carousel it has heading even the 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 you can say these two different carousel have different look and feel all together and there are so many different different sections and there is a scroll bar in like carousel behavior in each one of them it looks so much complicated in order to design reason it has so many videos so many stuff over here and there are so many limited functionality that you see on the page right but still it seems to be very complex right so first of all try to remove the complexity try to see the skeleton become a doctor right so uh, you are a doctor uh, and where you don't want to see your glory on your face and your skin you want it to peep inside ki bhaiya andar hai kya right that will give you a better visibility how you can do that what i generally prefer when you get a wireframe or you get a like figma you better understand that but if if any generic statement or problem statement is given probably what i do i generally remove all the beauty which is present over here something like this you see uh basically you have got rid of all the cool stuff images and everything now you see what it, what it, you have to implement certain things you have to implement and everything is like same out of box right so what we are going to do you have to implement a nav bar so you have certain nav bar you have a particular section which has certain images behind the scene there is a video component there is certain text need to be shown and certain other informations are here right uh, you have a carousel if you build this carousel as a single uh, you can say design component this can be used at multiple places if you have to break it down you have a carousel it has certain properties it has an heading probably it has a uh, a uh, thumbnail where you can hover on that it gives you a detail and it you can decide what sort of media you want to place i i do want it to place a image or a video right it has an actions also so probably to make it very generic carousel you give a capability to pass down a component altogether right you decide i, I wanted to pass a component and the component can be injected in the parent itself right those kind of thing can be done and it can be made very very generic altogether which can be leveraged now you see what you have to do if you have to make it configurable uh, driven 
what you are doing you are injecting your design system ka carousel you are passing the data in certain you can say json format and it is rendering it say suppose you have to render multiple instances you will say definitely i want i am going to pass the array of the configuration and this is going to render like this so what what we are doing first of all we are trying to break down the pieces so that it can become a common pieces in our design system I, it can be granular as granular as in button also because you wanted to keep your button color look and feel same like you, you wanted to have some theming which is quite same in uh, entire netflix so try to like abstract those information into the design system then try to think in terms of the configuration that you can have uh, where you don't have to hard put it it's more about you can driven you, have, you can write a transformer uh, which is going to like convert your configuration into the import of your design system ka component and finally rendering it so those things are basically going to help you and if you have to talk about the services which is going to be helpful over here definitely one service which i can see is a video player which is going to definitely help you second is related to your share sharing your like uh, information related to the reviews likes and so on right? so probably that is another service that can help you to the data sharing between the places there can be other lot of other services that we can come up maybe managing your carousel states and all those things can be a different uh, feature altogether or service there can be a, serv a service which basically helps you to do an infinite scroll and make a different different searches and there can be a service which basically manages your search or you can say catalog related so what what information will be shown in this page is something which is managed by that particular service so think about breaking uh, your problem statement into the services the logical parts basically okay Let's try to understand the implementation detail in the data API, how certain things are done in the Netflix, right? So in terms of the protocol, it uses both. It uses the REST and the GraphQL and the, the most of the interaction are done on the JSON. But on the server side, there are also the proto buff, which we are not going to talk about. Uh, implementation detail, there are certain functionalities as we see. Uh, pagination in the infinite scroll. Infinite scroll in this case is on the horizontal direction vertical direction is a bit limited in case of the netflix debounds and throttling you should be aware of one is for the rate limiting and second is for where you wanted to control your event right so uh, like get into the detail of these one is used for when you are searching for the debouncing basically and when you are doing a, a scroll sort of thing where you wanted to limit your events which are going to be spawned right and you wanted to make sure the number of event in a certain duration are fixed right so those kind of things can be done using the throttling we can talk about these things in in the separate video altogether. Uh, video streaming, we have got into the lot of detail about what are the libraries we can use, what are the different protocols, what are the different you can say HTTP protocols also. Configuration you uh, variable UI will be having a glimpses. Uh, even the preview will be having a glimpses in terms of you can say SSR. We will be seeing what sort of thing we uh, Netflix is basically doing. And from there, we'll be going into some of the detail of the data modeling uh, of certain APIs and certain, uh, you can say, uh, component APIs as well. Along with that, I wanted to show some of the image optimization related stuff also over here uh, in, in the Netflix. Let's quickly see how Netflix is doing certain things. Let's see. Uh, this is the first page which Netflix is requesting for, which is slash in Netflix.com slash in what it written this is a request we can go this is the request which is made what we got in the response we got actually a rendered page right this is an entire rendered page that we got but obviously this won't be interactive and there is a concept in react which is called hydration if you're not aware again look into that so once you get a the static html from the server to the client now react basically does the hydration on top of it to make it interactive and obviously there is a second render around that so you see what you get, you you get uh, like a script over here and basically this is getting executed. Uh, and finally you see this is a div basically which is getting mounted over here, right? And uh, this is the output which, which you see over here. So for from the server itself, you get a rendered page which you get for the first glimpse and after that there is a hydration and law. Basically you get the interactive page over here. You see there is no animation uh, over here. There is no video basically rendered. This is a, you can say blob basically, uh, Netflix is basically showing over here. We will be seeing. So you see there is an animation, there is a video working over here, but over here there is no video, nothing is working. So that, that kind of optimization it is doing to make the user experience better. Now let's quickly also see into your images, what sort of images it is serving basically. 
it is having certain blobs as well as we talked about this is a blob right uh, and uh, there are certain pngs png images as well this is very interesting what it does this piece we are seeing right so it has uh, images which is used as a skeleton which is png and in inside this it is using a video player which is using a uh, like uh, mp4 sort of you can say image over your video play image over here video basically right and which is showing inside this so it is using some css technique in order to fit it over here because it is a png and it can see the stuff which is behind that so using all those optimization it is giving a better experience so this can be also achieved using the css animation or you can use the gif as well but in order to have a you can say a very small which can be controlled better in terms of the video in terms of the quality for what devices it is going to be rendered so that's why netflix is doing that uh, on top of it i also wanted to highlight one important thing we talked about localization in starting so how localization is basically handled over here uh, let's quickly see uh, localization and theming two important things basically are managed over here probably if it is not visible let me make it a bit 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 bigger okay so uh, first thing this is related to all the localized string so you see these are the variables which they might have used in the code which is getting replaced by these text and these text will keep on changing depending on what sort of language you have selected so for us we are getting a hindi and english as an option for different countries there will be different option altogether so these are the localized string that we are getting from the server altogether which can be replaced in the code now second is related to the theming as we said it it also provide a way to provide a better theme so you see there are different hash code which are used for different different thing for the animation button what sort of animation it will be using what, what sort of color code are there so there are so many things that it does in terms of the theming as well so these configuration that we get from the uh, server altogether there are another important thing that uh, netflix is doing which is this uh, what it does it it can serve your html as a normal web page but if it wanted to serve your html from the server to the client in terms of the api responses it could have stringified your json and served it but again it comes with a cost in terms of there can be some uh, utf code which can be modified which it doesn't want it to be probably what it does it basically converted it into i will showcase what it is so basically you can use a top and you can pass down the string that we got uh, okay it's a top my bad no worries so it's a top right so let's see what we get as an output quickly okay we see this is a html so this is an interesting thing which basically netflix is doing instead of sending your raw html over the api responses where it can be modified by man in the middle so in order to avoid that what it is doing it is converting it is encrypting uh, and basically which is decoded on the client in order to have the better you can say uh, most of the places i have seen they are using this encryption logic in terms of the, even sending your api's responses this is something cool which we should uh, learn let's check some of the APIs that we can build uh, obviously this time we are not going to more into the detail we have talked a lot of things so what are these APIs like certain APIs like genres right so basically we wanted to get the categories what are the different categories available in different different cases say suppose in terms of the movies what are the categories in terms of the TV series what are the category we wanted to get the videos and the important factor in these videos are the category because we wanted to have the categorization there are two ways either you create an object of uh, you can create a list of object right where you on the client make a differentiation and do a massaging where you do the grouping on based on the category second you can expect those categories coming from the uh, server altogether right from the uh, from the server layer second we have to also think in terms of the infinite scroll that is there in each category right do think about those things while designing your get videos ka api and there is get video detail in this you might have to get more detail depending on either that is movie or the tv series uh, but you can if you can make it generic a model all together where you can fetch the details for both that will be great user personalization is something which is very important uh, because you don't want to send certain information and again and again it's more about you have set, set certain things and that can be leveraged either in terms of you, you are setting that in the header all together or in terms of the user personalization which is permanently stored in the server right so couple of things that need to be you should be aware of what thing can be set in the header that is going to leverage certain uh, stuff uh, in terms of the netflix one is which locale 
basically you are belong to right uh, second is the app version which app version you are using because for the different different app version there can be different api request and different graphql basically layer which can be used right ui version which you are using which is again going to be very important user agent which tells about your browser about your operating system all those versions are basically shared using the user agent bandwidth why this is important uh, certain you can say video player compute this bandwidth uh, off screen so that it it can tell to the server what sort of how how adaptive you can say quality video need to be sent from the server to the client these are the some critical information again one thing i wanted to also talk about we initially saw there are multiple user support as well right so there can be multiple profile that can be created how that is done again the user profile information is sent in the header and that can be stored in your local storage why it is stored in the local storage not probably stored in your personalized information because there can be multiple users who are using and that information can't be stored it is user specific browser specific where you are using right say suppose you wanted to use uh, the same application from your mobile by default it won't log in with the default or the last you can say profile every time it asks you the uh, the question where you wanted to log in unless you have initially logged in or used a particular profile in a particular device those are the some important thing that you have to look into again the implementation detail of say suppose what what sort of questions can be there in terms of the ld one is the customizable ui where i give you configuration based on that configuration you render the ui altogether second is definitely the streaming area that we have built third is related to having a infinite scroll behavior which you can use the uh, intersection observer in order to uh, like have a better infinite scroll and decide when you wanted to load other set of data a uh, pagination as we said two type of either that is button or the infinite scroll that you can leverage debouncing search related stuff can be asked in, in, in implementation of your lld which we will be covering in the upcoming videos we will be getting into the detail but yes uh these are certain things which i have highlighted other thing you can decide what are the request and response parameter depending on either you are going with the rest or the graphql but yes you depending on the request we have talked a lot about lot of thing you can pin down those things you can go and check the network tab of you can see the youtube and the netflix in order to see how basically the request is being sent and how the response is being sent sometimes you may feel difficulty because certain data are encrypted which you won't see as a plain raw data raw english string in order to uh, read it manually right so those challenges you will be facing but yes uh, with this we are going to talk about very interesting thing till now we have mostly covered about the front end part now what we are going to cover from the from this point in the video we are going to cover the back end for the front end like it's good that we are front end developer we have the excellent knowledge about our domain but we should also know what the back end guys are doing so that we can solve we can help uh, we can brainstorm while solving their problems as well right while designing some contracts while get, getting some good ideas how to do so, solve certain things if we know how certain things are done on the back end it is going to definitely leverage to build a end to end a stable and more reliable and performant a system which can be used by millions of people and billions of people let's talk about the back end for the front end of netflix so where we will be talking about the open connect in terms of the cdn right what are the microservices how the like you can say transcoding or you can say processing of the video for the different qualities are done right for the different languages how the audio and the video is kept separately for most of the purposes localization related stuff how the load balancing is done right lot of thing we are going to dis like discuss about okay hold on we are not going to cover this in this video because we have already covered so many things related to the front end let's not mess up so wait for the next video and if you like this video don't forget to like share and subscribe thank you for watching check the system design and see you in the next episode